there's two main things that we need to concern ourselves with fitting a snow breaker, and that is the, the side to side movement within the rails. Also check the snow breaker for twists, because if it's twisted, it's not gonna be straight sliding in the rails and it could compress snow within the rail itself. Some of the things that we wanna do is we wanna slide the snow breaker into the rails and get an idea of how much it wiggles side to side. Uh, we got about an, uh, an eighth to a sixteenth here, and that's to get this thing to wiggle and not bind. And that's another important piece too, so if not just during the install when the machine comes new, it's something that customers are gonna wanna pay attention to as they're doing maintenance on their machine. Right, and this snow breaker can be hit by a puck or something like that, so it can become damaged or twisted or out of shape on the machine due to an impact. It would be impact from uh, from something going through the auger other than snow. It may be a puck, it may be a stick, broken stick. It may be, there may be even a cause where there's snow. So as they're picking up snow off the ice, the temperatures in that facility may be too warm. Now that snow is a slush. So that slush is now trying to freeze inside and it's creating a binding uh, position as well. The second thing we wanna make sure is that there's no twist, right? If this frame has been whacked or, or it's sometimes out of uh, straightness, when we put it on a table, it's gonna rock from corner to corner. And you can, there's a little bit of rock in this. You can hear it kind of click. And this is the twist that is uh, gonna cause us a lot of problems. This twist would prevent the snow breaker from sliding straight in the rails. We want the, the snow breaker as straight as possible so when you stroke, that all the snow comes out of the rails at the bottom. And a twisted snow breaker tends to compress snow within the rail. What they can watch for is the timing of that up and down. They can watch when it's in the channel, how it's moving in that up and down, because you'll see as it's going up and down, if there's any hesitation in there whatsoever, you'll kind of see it doing this as it's going down. Even when they're on the ice, if they're looking down and they're starting to notice that there's a huge snow build up, and if it is an automatic snow break, the one thing they're gonna to wanna to do when they get off the ice is take a look to see if it was actually moving. Once it starts to freeze up, it's not something you can see outside. You have to see it as it's working. If it's a manual snow break, you'll know right away because as you're pushing down, you'll get resistance. Yeah, right. binds. It binds right away. So you'll be going and it's like, it is not moving. So you know at that point, there is an issue with your snow break. So that's one of the things they're gonna to have to look for. So when they're looking for it, they're gonna either see it's it's going to be bent up, it's going to be in its shaft sideways, but there will be an issue there. So the only thing they can do on a manual check, if they have a manual snow break, is they're gonna to have to have two people, one up top doing this, while the other one is looking through the, the conditioner just to make sure it's actually sliding down smoother. Some of the tips they could do is they could actually put a little bit of uh, WD into the channel if there's a bit of a bind there, but typically if there is a bind, there is an issue with the break itself. You're gonna to wanna to watch for your spring tension. You wanna make sure that you have nice tension as you're pushing up and down. If you look into the channel, see how nice and smooth that is going up and down. If this starts to bend, you're gonna find that you're gonna be pushing down as hard as you can. If there's any twist, what'll happen is, is as you're trying to push down, this is maybe as far as it will go. 